Hello everyone. Recently someone asked me if I would do a video on my sewing accoutrements and I agreed to do it. And in this video I will share with you all of uh, the pieces that I have acquired over a number of years. Um, some are new additions to my collection and um, some are from my childhood. And one of the first pieces is my Taylor's board. And this board, as you can see, it's in its original box. And the board um, is from 1966, and it has the original instruction, instructions. And this is a nice touch, um, and it will just add to the history of the piece. And as you can see, you can see the author on the inside, and this is June Taylor. And that is uh, who the board is named after. And on the inside of the pamphlet, you see a variety of ways that the board can be used. And the board, you can uh, just pop it up. And on the inside, you have hinges that hold uh, the bottom leg, and then you have a button. And you pull the smaller leg forward, and it'll click into place. And then the board stands up. And you use this board um, for seams, for collars, cuffs, um, facing, you name it. And this is a really good uh, piece um, to have in your sewing arsenal. The next pieces I have are my rulers. And this is one of my standard rulers. I have two French curves, one plastic, one metal, and then of course I have my trusty ruler. And I use this in all my garment constructing and it's um, by far has become my very favorite ruler. And this I got along with my uh, French curves and um, I acquired those um, when I took my um, design class. Next, I have my Taylor's Clapper, and this is something that I recently acquired, and this is a really good item to have in your, um, in your sewing collection. Next is a tape measure from 8th grade, and uh, this tape measure was given to me by my mother. My mother uh, taught me how to sew, and um, I continued my training um, in school at, in 8th grade, and it continued forward. The next item are my scissors, and these scissors are uh, some of the best scissors I've ever had, and uh, they were quite pricey, and it was um, worth the investment. And I only used this for uh, my sewing and nothing else. Next, I have my Taylor's chalk, and uh, you, as you can see, there are a variety of colors. And um, I will use, um, I will change up, either I'll use Taylor's chalk or I'll use my Taylor's pencils. It just depends on uh, what I'm deciding to do um, when I'm uh, constructing a garment. The next item are my pinking shears, and these pinking shears are uh, circa 1940s, 1950s, and uh, this is from the J. Weiss and Sons Company, and uh, these um, pinking shears are just uh, the best things around. And um, as you can see on the inside, I have uh, the Model C pinking shears, and in the upper left corner, um, the pinking shears uh, were owned from the, um, is the original owner of the pinking shears. And as you can see, it's come in its original box, and that's quite nice. The next piece is my point turner, and this point turner I haven't had an opportunity to use just yet, but um, this is uh, good if you have a uh, pointed collar and you want to make sure that you uh, get that point just right, and you would uh, insert this on the inside of the garment and push the point forward, and it'll give you a nice, uh, nice finish to that uh, collar. And then also you can use this uh, to um, remove basting stitches and you can also use it when you're attaching your buttons. The next items I have are uh, from the Singer Sewing Company and uh, these are from the 1950s. And uh, this is a uh, tailor's ham and a sleeve roll. And these items, um, as you can see, are in the original packaging and uh, the fabric on the back is a um, blue plaid and it's got red and white stripes through it. And I always keep the packaging for all my vintage pieces. Um, it adds to the integrity and the history of, uh, of those pieces. And um, just like with my Taylor's board, um, it comes in its original box and its instructions. So uh, this will be a good thing to pass on to someone in my family or um, someone else that I know. The next is a small collection of my sewing books. 
Uh, the first book right here in the front is uh, Making Smart Clothing, and that's uh, from uh, 1930. The next is My Better Homes and Garden book, um, Gardens book, and I got it from a thrift store, and I paid 25 cents for it. Um, the book that's right behind it is uh, the, uh, McCall's Dressmaking book, and uh, that book is from 1951. Um, and if I did mention it, the um, Better Homes and Gardens book is um, 1961. But many of the other books, um, I use all these books um, as resource manuals in my garment constructing. And um, if I just want something very unique, I refer to these books and everything. Um, also, uh, this book here is a uh, the Ford Motors, excuse me, not Ford Motors, uh, it is the Ford Modeling Agency book. Um, and this is, uh, it's from uh, 1960s, and it's a book that my mother had and she uh, gave to me. And um, it includes a lot of things about etiquette and uh, self-care and um, just a lot of great things in there. And I sometimes refer to that and um, it even has some, um, ways to exercise and it also has some of the models from the 1960s. Um, I believe Lauren Hutton is one of those uh, models in the back but it's a, a really good book um, to look over. The next items I'll show you are my sewing machines and this is uh, my Serger sewing machine and it's uh, from the early 1980s and um, I don't usually um, go into the 80s and even consider the 80s vintage, uh, but considering that there were uh, the sergers weren't um, weren't around um, earlier, um, I guess you could um, include this as, as something that would be vintage. But as you can see, it's very old, <laughs> and um, it needed a little bit of work on it, uh, not much, but um, I took it into uh, the um, sewing company here in. Uh, my area and um, they did a great job at repairing it. Um, it came with its booklet and then also a covering for it. And I didn't pay very much for this serger and um, when I was thinking about going into buying sergers um, I was thinking to myself if I should go with a new one or if I should go with an old one so um, this has really um, been worth um, every penny and it uh, works just as well as some of the new ones. The next piece I'll share with you is this sewing machine. And um, you're probably wondering why I have this sewing machine. Well, the answer is um, it has uh, several um, zigzag um, components that I can use. Um, my reason for getting this is because my brother has a um, zigzag mechanism on it that is not working. So I thought if I got this sewing machine, I could get all my zigzag uh, stitches in. Um, and then it, um, the other plus was that it didn't cost very much. Um, it was about, I believe, $37 with a few, uh, just a little bit of tax on it. So that's something I just could not pass up. The next item I have here that I wanted to share with you is a chair for my grandmother and this is the chair that I sit in when I do all of my sewing and uh, the garment um, here on the left is uh, something that I'm currently working on and as you can see there's also the cushion and this beautiful tapestry work on the chair and this is the beautiful old chair and I just have, th have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, this is my sewing uh, Singer sewing machine it's an industrial machine and uh, this machine is around 1950s, and I have used this to make my hats, my dresses, uh, coats, you name it, and it's just a really good machine. On the back here, I have a sleeve board, and the sleeve board, you're probably wondering why I have the sleeve board, considering that I have an ironing board cabinet that contains a sleeve board. And um, the answer to that is <laughs> that um, I had this board before the ironing board cabinet and um, the, um, I just had not gotten around to recovering it. Um, it had um, very old muslin, several layers of muslin and uh, stuffing on it and I had to remove that. So at some point I will put a new covering on it and uh, perhaps I'll just give it to someone else or uh, just keep it, uh, just keep it around. 
here's my um, thread cabinet and um, this is just a small portion of my threads. Um, as I indicated in a previous video on my sewing room, um, I would be including some cabinets and at some point I will, um, will be sharing that in that video um, so you can see uh, the new cabinets and that will include my serger threads and uh, many of my other sewing accoutrements. The next item is uh, should be familiar to you. This is my um, Sears adjustable dress form and I've had this for a number of years. This is uh, 1950s and uh, Sears produced these dress forms in uh, two styles, um, a style A and a style B. And uh, of course I have the style B and it has the original uh, decal on it and I have used this uh, for several garments um, that I have constructed and uh, it will size up or size down and it has the original stand and it's um, it's just a beautiful piece and um, it's um, just something that I have enjoyed using. The next item I have here is a thread box and this thread box is from the 1970s as you can see with the pea green color and on the inside of course it contains all my thread, some of my thread, and um, my bobbins. The next piece here is my brother sewing machine, and I've had this for a number of years. And um, it's um, been just great in all of my clothing construction. And you can see it has a light there, and it has a door that opens up, and on the inside, you can see a little slot there where I can put my scissors, my bobbins, my thread, needles, you name it. And right on the side here is a little uh, pedal, and that is a leg pedal, and that is um, how the um, machine is um, used when you're sewing. So you just press that up against it and it will move the sewing machine. So there you have it. Um, all of the things that um, that I use in my um, continuous sewing and I hope you enjoyed it um, and I enjoyed sharing all of this with you and we'll see you next time bye bye